Well, hey there. Working on a booklet here today. Uh, I just got done taking a survey uh, from the NPRC, National Printing Research Council. If you haven't looked them up, you certainly should. Uh, you know, they're not endorsing me or anything, but that group, they all, what they do is they survey printers across the country and then analyze that information and create some valuable statistics uh, that get sent back to the people who take the survey. And if you take the survey, you get that information for free. Uh, but if you don't take the survey, you have to pay a couple hundred bucks for that information. But uh, I'll put a link uh, in the description. Uh, definitely worth your time. Sometimes some of the surveys take a lot of work. Uh, they'll survey estimating uh, to see you know, how different people charge for you know, mailing jobs. Uh, they survey for wide format, printing, uh, payroll, all, everything having to do with running a printing business. So certainly worth your time to check it out. Uh, and they currently have a, uh, a COVID-19 survey to see how businesses are adapting during this time. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see uh, how printers are doing. Overall, I'm sure uh, they're printing less. Uh, there's probably a, a few outliers that are, you know, business as normal and even a few people that are doing better than normal. But uh, certainly uh, check them out. Uh, you can learn a lot of information to hone yourself because you could do the survey for estimating and if you see that you are way out of line with everybody else on estimating a certain number 10 envelope that's two color, you know, then, then you know, oh, hey, something, something's wrong here. I need, to, I need to check it out. So make sure you check them out. Got a little bit of white space here. Those are always the trickiest parts of these saddle stitch jobs when you have artwork that crosses over. So all we have to do is move our fold and our stitch like a 30 second or not even, that'll be fine. That's what I'm talking about. run them. Just 40 copies of that book and we're printing another 200. I want to climb inside here and uh, just see what the hydraulic fluid looks like uh, and then figure out whether or not I actually want to change it. There's all kinds of goodies in here. The book. <laughs> and another one. Wasn't expecting that. Oh, three of them. <laughs> no idea how that happened. I need some light. I just want to check the level. Because if that oil is full and it's up above the sight glass, that's nice and clean. I don't know if I'm going to bother, but if the oil level is down lower, then it's going to need to be changed. I just took the breather cap off the top here. I just want to see the collet. Oh yeah, that oil is nice and clean. I don't know, maybe they have synthetic oil in here, but I'm not going to bother changing that. Well, 
there you have it. Kind of feels wrong. Look at that hydraulic fluid. Looks crystal clear. And uh, typically, at least on on the guillotine, on the 305, uh, that turns black. So, maybe the sales guy was right. I don't know, maybe they used synthetic or something else. And I understand too that you can't necessarily tell the quality of an oil by its color, but I don't know if I, I don't know if I'm gonna change that. But for now, I'm, I mean, I'm happy with that. It's, it's at the correct level and it looks nice, so. I think I'm just gonna keep on running. I don't know, let me know in the comments if it's a good choice or not to uh, just keep running that. I don't see a problem with it, but uh, if somebody is speaking from experience, thinks I should change it anyways, let me know. I'd be interested to hear your opinions. Just this uh, sensor again. I think I probably tweaked it a little too far one way. But it wasn't recognizing that the book left on a longer book. But it's kind of cozy in here. It's nice. Back at it this morning here. Got a fresh cup of Joe. Got a whole mess of stuff to print. What I typically like to do uh, is I like to run the 6500 as much as possible. So if it's 60 pound text and light ink coverage, I run it on here. If for some reason I can't get it to look nice on the 6500, I always fall back on the 3070. So let's get these done. Don't you just love it when your customer wants you to match a sample that they gave you and the stuff you print just looks so much better than their sample. I love that. Okay, I wanna go over really quick how to adjust the curves on a Creo rip to make the 6500 look a lot better than it, than it does normally. So here we have, uh, I printed this on the 3070 and you always get much better magenta coverage. The red really pops on that compared to the 6500. It's always been that way. So the first sheet out looks like this, which you can tell is a lot more washed out. Even in the, the yellows. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring up magenta and yellow 
so I can try and make this look like the 3070. So on the Creo here, up here is the curves that you can adjust. So you just click on that, and uh, here are your curves, and you can select them all or just cyan, magenta, yellow, or black. So the ones we really want to work on are magenta and yellow. And uh, really, I just want to work on this 100% uh, coverage area. So we want like everything, I mean, and we're gonna really crank on it here. I want things that are coming in at like 90 to output as 100. Uh, but I don't want all this to go up. So we're going to pull this down to 50-50. You can see down here, input is 51, output's 51. We don't want to change any of this. I'm also going to pull it down out here too. So it really just spikes right at the, 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 the darkest areas of the print. And same for yellow. We're just going to crank that up, pull it back down here throughout the rest, and even here, maybe a little bit less, it'll be a little less noticeable. And then up here you just uh, click save, and save it as whatever you want. We'll save it as menu, and then close that, then select your job, and go into color, color adjustments, and then select the gradation that you saved, which is menu. And then print it out, see what it looks like. Okay, so that's the before, and then this is after. A lot more red showing up in the tomatoes, and then a lot more yellow too, down here. It's very comparable to the 3070. Uh, I mean, the red is still a little bit less. That's probably the only difference. But when you take the before and after, that is a lot, lot better. And that's just one way you can make your machine look a lot better than it just typically does. We're probably like an hour, two hours into it here, and I'm convinced that the harder you run these things, the better it looks. Because as I'm running, I feel like that magenta is getting darker, and there's more pop. I think it looks real great. Harder you run it, the better it looks. All right, that's enough fun for one video, so. I'm gonna fold these menus all a day. Thanks for watching. Catch you later.